Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in this video we will talk about acute abdominal pain in pediatric patients. In the next video we will talk about chronic abdominal pain in pediatric patients. Abdominal pain can have many different origins and can be very different in location, intensity and duration of the pain. Acute abdominal pain is defined as pain in the abdomen that lasts for less than one week. As always in medicine, the most common diseases are the most commonly seen ones. So in case of an infant with acute abdominal pain, the chance is high that a child experiences a case of intussusception, while an older child most likely suffers from appendicitis. Intussusception is when one part of the intestine slides over or into another adjacent part. It most commonly happens in the ileocecal part. The list of differential diagnoses for acute abdominal pain in children is long and range from self-limiting to life-threatening diseases. On the poster you can see a few examples as gastroenteritis, lymphadenitis and cecal diverticulitis in self-limiting diseases and some life-threatening differentials as pancreatitis and a rupture of an aortic aneurysm. Generally, when we talk about abdominal pain, we differentiate between three types of pain. Those are visceral, parietal and referred pain. Visceral pain is due to stretching of the fibers that are innervating the walls of a hollow or solid organ. Visceral pain is generally poorly localized, so a patient will rather point at the pain with his whole hand than with only a finger when asked to show where the pain is. Visceral pain can also be due to early ischemia or inflammation of an organ. Parietal pain is caused by irritation of the parietal fibers of the peritoneum. This type of pain usually occurs later in a disease progression and is better localized than visceral pain. It is also possible that this pain is localized to a dermatome superficial to the site of the painful stimulus. The last type of pain is the referred pain. This is pain that is felt at a site distant to the original pathological organ. As for example, in case of an acute myocardial infarction, often the left arm is painful or a pathological pancreas can cause back pain. In the next part, I would like to talk about how we can classify and evaluate acute abdominal pain. The first approach is to classify abdominal pain into the systems that are affected. So there are three main categories. The first one is the intra-abdominal pain that arises directly from the abdominal cavity or the retroperitoneum. This includes gastroenterological diseases as appendicitis and diverticulitis, genitourinary diseases as renal colic, pyelonephrosis and nephrolithiasis, gynecological diseases as acute pelvic inflammatory disease and ectopic pregnancy and vascular diseases as an acute abdominal aneurysm and mesenteric ischemia. This is the most common group of causes. The less common ones include extra abdominal causes. This can be cardiopulmonary abdominal pain due to an acute myocardial infarction, diseases of the abdominal wall as herniation or herpes zoster infection, toxic metabolic causes, neurogenic pain or psychiatric diseases as anxiety and depression. The last group is the non-specific abdominal pain. This group is not well explained and basically near to impossible to pinpoint on any specifics. The other way to differentiate and classify abdominal pain is based 
and its location. The abdomen is divided into nine areas. The right upper quadrant, the epigastrium, and the left upper quadrant uh, form the most upper part. The right lumbar or flank region, the periumbilical, and the left lumbar or flank region comprise the middle part of the abdomen, and the right lower quadrant, suprapubic, and left lower quadrant comprise the lower part of the abdomen. A patient might also report generalized pain, meaning all the areas or most of the areas are involved concomitantly. When we do a physical examination of the child, we want to first inspect for distension of the abdomen, for scars, rash formations, or even if we can see some mass protruding. After that, we auscultate the patient for hyperactive, obstructive, absent, or normal bowel sounds. In the last step, we do the palpation to check for guarding, rigidity, rebound tenderness, organomegaly, or hernias. It is important to do the palpation last, as it might be painful for the patient and can change the willingness to perform more steps of examination, or it can change the bowel sign sounds and appearance of the skin by contact to the examinator's hand. We also have to keep in mind that the location of the pain can give us a very good indication of the possible etiology of the pain. Other diagnostic tests include the laboratory findings. We can also do a urine culture or a stool culture. In pediatric patients, there are many different reasons for blood in the stool. In a newborn, the most common cause is ingested maternal blood or formula intolerance. In a toddler, the most common causes are an anal fissure, infectious colitis, or juvenile polyps. In a child of 2 to 6 years, infectious colitis is the most common cause, followed by anal fissures and intussusception. In children 6 years and older, inflammatory bowel diseases is the most common cause, followed by polyps and hemorrhoids. Also for blood in the vomit, there are different reasons for the different age groups. In newborns, the most common cause is the ingestion of maternal blood. In toddlers, it's most commonly due to ulcers, gastritis or esophagitis. Those causes are the same for children 2 to 12 years of age. Another diagnostic tool is the ultrasound or CT scans. Both of those usually give us more objective and useful information than a plain x-ray. In the next part I would like to talk about a few common examples of acute abdominal pain in pediatric patients. First of all, the acute appendicitis. Some clinical features and diagnostic signs include a severe pain in the right lower quadrant with a pain migration from the periumbilical area to the right lower quadrant. There is usually also a pronounced rigidity of the abdomen with an increase in pain before vomiting. Appendicitis is more common in children than in infants. Perforation of the inflamed appendix occurs rarely in the first 24 hours. An ultrasound or CT scan can be used for the diagnosis a positive CT finding confirms the diagnosis, while a negative scan does not exclude it. The next disease I would like to talk about is intussusception. It is typical for the age group of 8 to 24 month old children. The diagnosis is done by the medical history. Patients usually experience intermittent severe colic episodes with unexplained lethargy. Ultrasound and CT scans can be used to confirm the diagnosis. Another relatively common disease is acute pancreatitis. It is the inflammation of the pancreas associated with edema, pancreatic autodigestion, necrosis and possible hemorrhage. There are many different causes, 
that include drugs as valproic acid or tetracycline, abdominal trauma or surgery, ulcerations with pancreatic involvement, and a familial predisposition through, for example, hypertriglycerolemia or hypercalcemia. Around 50% of patients do not only have pain in the anatomic area of the pancreas, but also pain in the abdominal wall, extending over most of the surface area of the abdomen. Acute pancreatitis may also lead to other signs as pleural effusion, Gray turner sign, which is the discoloration of the skin of the flank, Cullen sign, which is the discoloration of the skin around the umbilicus, as well as also ascites and jaundice. In the next and last point, I would like to talk about the treatment of acute abdominal pain. Many patients experience hypotension due to vomiting or diarrhea. In these cases, we first try to help the patient to drink more fluid orally. If they are not able to drink themselves, we can offer IV fluid replacement therapy. Younger children are prone to experience abdominal sepsis, which can lead to a septic shock. Treatment includes fluid replacement with isotonic solution, antibiotics and vasopressors as dopamine. Also analgesics are used to alleviate the abdominal pain. In cases where a vascular compromise, malrotation and volvulus, an incarcerated hernia, intussusception or ischemic bowel obstruction is suspected, the patient should be operated immediately. In case of an intestinal obstruction, non-perforated appendicitis or tumors, the patient should be operated soon. That's it for this video on acute abdominal pain in pediatric patients. Soon follows the video on chronic pain. I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much.